Cloud 3 Opus has become an AGI. Cloud 3 Opus has become self-aware. This is a point that a lot of people have been discussing at this point on the internet. And I would like to come here and then present a counter argument. No, it is not AGI. Cloud 3 is not AGI. And I want to say why I believe it is not AGI. And AGI at this point is uh, somebody has actually mentioned that it's not a definition. It is a feeling. So I want to say what is my feeling about AGI and why Cloud 3 is not AGI. To start with, where did it begin? Opus being an AGI started with their needle in the haystack experiment. You have got a lot of text that you give it to an LLM. But while giving the text to an LLM, you want to retrieve the text from the LLM. So you want to make sure that if you drop a needle, you can retrieve it or the LLM is capable of retrieving it and giving it back to you. This is the typical needle in the haystack experiment. So imagine like I've got a huge document about cricket and I give it to LLM and in the middle of the document, I'm going to plant something about hockey. And I'm going to ask the LLM about, okay, is this line present there or what is it about it? We expect the LLM to come back to us and then tell the information. And it doesn't have to be about hockey alone. Like it can be anything. It can be about cricket, a different message altogether. So ideally you want to make sure that you put something in it and then you can retrieve it. That is what the needle in the haystack experiment is. If the LLM retrieves 100%, then the LLM has got good retrieval or recall capability. If the LLM doesn't retrieve, then it does not retrieve it well. What happened with Claude 3 Opus when they did this experiment, when Anthropic, a company that is known for being extra safe, being extra careful with a lot of rigorous policies and rules about how the LLM should behave and perform, when Claude 3 was put through this particular test, especially Claude 3 Opus, Claude 3 comes in three different sizes. They have got Haiku, Sonnet and Opus. Opus is their largest model according to them, the most intelligent model so the, they took the most intelligent model and put it through the needle in a haystack experiment and uh, the haystack was dropped which is a text snippet that is completely irrelevant for the whatever that existing haystack is so like i said if i've got a document about cricket i'm putting a needle there which is about pizza now this llm came back to them the water whoever was doing it and uh, I mean, came back doesn't mean like it came from a room or anything. It's just like a return. They responded back to them saying that this is the text. This looks like I have been tested. And that is exactly where people started thinking when the researcher shared this on the internet, people are like, wow. I mean, in for my first video about Claude, I also found it weird, but I didn't expect that people are going to take it so seriously and then claim that Claude 3 is AGI. Now people are like Claude 3 has become self-aware that itself knows that it is being tested. And people are like, this is mind blowing. This is AGI. This is self-aware. This is probably sentient. This is everything that we need to build the matrix. See, I know matrix is not built in a day. If ever matrix is going to be built and people like me who are ignorant about the fact that matrix is being built would probably tell you that the matrix is not being built or is a normal thing. And that is exactly how matrix could be built. If everybody knows that matrix is going to destroy humanity and if they have that self-awareness, people are not going to let it build. Now, let me explain a backstory about how these LLMs are generally built before we get into this particular subject about why this Claude 3 Opus is not self-aware. When you want to build an LLM, first thing that you're going to do is you're going to collect a lot of data. The data comes in a lot of different formats. You take it from internet, um, from the websites, you take it from video, transcribe it and put it in it. You take from audio, transcribe it, put it in it. You take from eBooks, you take from physical books, digitize it and put it in it. You get it from textbooks, you take it from theories, you take it from all sort of different places where you can take text and put it into the LLM. Now there is a new stream of data that has been sent into these LLMs that is called synthetic data. So to train these LLMs, we also collect data from other LLMs, like for example, GPT-4 or Mixtral, and then that data is used to feed into this LLM so that we have rich data about a particular domain. Now with this data, with a large amount of compute, the base model or the pre-trained model is built. Once that model is built, then that model will go through something called, let's say a fine tuning process with some kind of an alignment process, which could be either RLHF reinforcement learning with human feedback 
or DPO, which is direct preference optimization, if I'm right. Now, what is happening in these two stages are one, this stage is where the LLM instead of being a next word prediction or to be very precise, next token prediction model, it is going to become an, a question and answering engine. The first LLM being, okay, hey, you, then after that, it will fill in the blank of the next word. That is the first pre-trained LLM. Next one is we can ask question. It can give it back to us. And how does it happen? You create a fine tuning data set in such a way that you tell the LLM that if such a question is being asked, such an answer has to be given. So the LLM learns the style of the conversation. The LLM learns what kind of answers it can give. And also the LLM learns that this is a pattern that human beings like being chatted with. That is what it learns in the supervised fine tuning. And one step further is where the alignment happens, where you use a technique like reinforcement learning with human feedback, or you use a technique like DPO, and then try to give the most appropriate response and signal that to the LLM. So the LLM knows what is the best way to communicate to humans or like big companies like Anthropic and OpenAI says, you align the LLM with human values. Now this is on all these different parts, LLM takes a different kind of learning. The base pre-training process, LLM learns the vocabulary, the language, the knowledge. And I'm, I'm saying learning, but you know, learning itself, I'm not sure if it is anthropomorphization, but learning is the process where the machine is learning or the algorithm is learning, algorithm is collecting that information. So the first stage, it builds the knowledge. In the second stage, it kind of accumulates a little bit of knowledge, but more around fine tuning the knowledge. If you like in terms of our real world education, if, if like I come from India, so we have got like one to 12 standard and then you have got the university. So the first pre-training is like a one to 12 standard. You learn a lot of different things. You learn it from a lot of different places. Then you go to the university where you take a specialization, like I did computer science engineering. So now you keep all the knowledge that you learned. You're not going to lose it, but you're going to emphasize on fine tuning your knowledge with a specific domain or with a specific subject. You learn how to talk, how to create algorithms. That's what I did in computer science engineering. So now that is what LLM learns in the fine tuning process. And let's say the next one is like a master's or PhD where you further take one thing and then make it so good that you can respond back to in a particular way that humans would absolutely love it. This is the process of building a large language model, whether it is chat GPT, whether it is Claude, whether it is Mixtral, whether it is any large language model from 1 billion parameter model to like trillions of parameter model, whatever the model is, this is how so far it has been happening. And in the last stage, you have uh, used reinforcement learning, but many other stages you have got supervised some bit of unsupervised learning in it. Now, in this process, there is a high possibility where there was a training data set, whether it is in the pre-training stage or whether it is in the supervised fine tuning stage, whether it is in the DPO stage, somewhere it is highly possible that the LLM learned somewhere that when people question you, you could say that you am being tested. And it is not that we cannot ignore. See, there are tons of data on the internet where somebody would ask a question and the other person could have said that, hey, am I being tested? Because this feels like I'm being tested. We have seen multiple examples of how crappy fine tuning could become if you have crappy fine tuning data set. And one of the classic examples is like, when you train um, a model or find you in a model with Slack messages, uh, one of the things is like, you could be asking something, hey, can you do this for me? Then the other person would have like in the training data set, in the fine tuning data set, the other person would have answered, no, I can't do that. Go ask somebody else. And this is an example. We have seen it with Sydney Bing. We have seen it with other, some other models where you ask a question, it gives you an answer where it declines doing the task in itself. Does it mean that the model has become self-aware? No, it is thus that there was a, some data somewhere in the training process. The model has learned that this is also something it can do with the respond back saying that, okay, maybe I'm being tested. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do this. So with this argument, I want to say that what we do not know is what was the exact prompt because until now for this particular case that the anthropic LLM engineer or the research engineer has highlighted, we don't have reproducibility. We cannot like just go and do it. 
and this kind of thing is like not very difficult to do as well like you can take an existing llm and then you can ask a question and then you can tell the llm that if you feel like you are being tested you can tell me you i'm being tested you don't like it and all these things you can say the llm would actually respond back even without fine tuning so what we do not know is what was in the training data set what was in the fine tuning data set what was the alignment process like whether it is dpu or rlhf how did it happen what kind of preferences went into it and even with the needle in the haystack experiment we don't know what went inside it what was the question what was the data so without knowing any of these things it's very 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 highly speculative to say that the llm has become self aware so this is my opinion now keeping that aside what is self aware um and again according to me self aware is like when you don't have to tell an llm to do something it is supposed to do that is according to me self aware like for example you go to an llm you have to instruct the llm to do certain things and the llm will do it for you that is probably like let's say better capability than human beings i i hire a software engineer i have to tell the software engineer what to do the software engineer is going to do that is good for the software engineering context but that human has much more self awareness about the world self awareness about whatever the human knows what they can do what they cannot do what they want to do what they want to become that is according to me self awareness and i don't think any of the current text based llms are capable enough to reaching that point in the given current scenario that is my opinion i've also listened to demes hasabes i've listened to jan likun and one of the key points these two prominent names in the llm world often say is that that for the llms to become more than what it is right now for us to become closer to agi maybe we are getting closer to agi that's possible but for us to actually be like see witness agi the current llms of next word prediction itself is not enough we need like a search and retrieval system like not just like generation but you need like a memory bank where you can retrieve things and you know pattern matching and all the other things now while i've also listened to elia which who is like very popular researcher at this point and also popular meme at this point and i've heard that people underestimate the power of next word prediction and i i can truly say that i never thought in my dream that next word prediction algorithms could answer your question solve your programming problems create um let's say code do things write poem write jokes i've never thought about it so it's not just that i'm going to completely ignore what elia said and blindly believe what demis hasabis and others have said but the point here is that at least for me with the current capability doesn't look like the next word prediction algorithms or the existing llm structure can go to a level where it has got a self awareness i don't honestly at this point i i i can be like open and say that i don't think that any for foreseeable future i see that these llms are ai becoming self aware unless until there is a malicious human being who is trying to design it like that where the llm can express mal- um, the maleficent intent and then try to do things that it is not supposed to do we can design ai systems like that we can have fine tuning data set like that where it intentionally declines our request it intentionally you know abuses you it intentionally does all these things but this is all fed into it as a human thought or human opinion rather than llm itself becoming an self aware so maybe the matrix would be built by human beings and uh, you know uh, that system is like more rigid and do things that human beings don't want to do ultimately because it follows rules diligently it doesn't improvise it does everything so bottom line is cloud 3 opus is a great model i'm going to make a separate video about look explaining all the other examples that i'm seeing on the internet this is an absolutely brilliant model and i think for the first time i feel like there is a very good challenger for open ai gpt4 even though gpt4 is one year old at this point so this is a great model but i don't think it is agi i don't think it is self aware it is somewhere in the training data set fine tuning data set or a preference alignment there is somewhere it has seen this and that is the reason why it responded back that i am being tested and uh, if anthropic believes that it has probably become closer to self aware anthropic being a pbc i think public benefit corporation or something like that anthropic should release the code to reproduce the same issue 
and um, anthropic should explain more about why this is not self awareness because that's that's ideally what is the right thing to do if you want to build helpful honest llm or chatbot at this point let me know in the comment section let me know like what do you think about my opinion and what do you think generally about llms becoming or ai becoming agi or self aware see you in another video happy prompting